If you had asked people 10 years ago that we would be where we are, I think that a lot of people would say, too fast, too much, too soon. So have a together. So have a together. In 2004, my friend Maureen called me. Maureen and Kim, I met them in 1999 at a Bruce Springsteen concert, and they were here, and they were, I think, in this room, in a long, snaking line of couples to get married. Maureen and Kim had been together for eight years. If I should call you up. They called me and they said, we need a flower boy, we need a ring bearer, and we need a witness, can you get those things? And I said, yep, I'm in, I'll be right there. And it worked out and they got married. It was a beautiful and powerful day here at City Hall in 2004. I can't see me loving nobody but you. I dreamt about this day that I would be able to come up in front of people and in front of my loved ones and friends and declare my love. And this day is almost here, but not in California yet. Their marriage was later negated by the court. They were no longer married. And then Marie contracted cancer and she died, leaving only Kim before they could get married. Marie worked at Stanford. She had a really, really good job. She had health insurance. She had survivor benefits. She had a 401k. She had life insurance. Like all of us, she had social security. Kim got nothing. Nothing. Eight years together, married for a few moments, and Kim got nothing because the state and the government says, well, you're just close friends. They're more than close friends. They were a loving, committed couple. The fact is that the struggle for civil rights and the struggle for equality is full of examples where there's a lot of apprehension at the beginning, where there's a lot of thoughts and a lot of questions and people saying, you know, do we really want to move that quickly? Do we really want to push the envelope? It's gone from being this like wonky legislative conversation to really a real impact, a devastating impact of discriminatory laws on committed loving families. We are uh, fighting so hard for the right to marry in a building where at any given time there are five or ten weddings taking place. We are really, really glad you're here. It's a Thursday, it's a weekday, it's a work day, it's lunch hour, it's Valentine's Day. What in the world are you doing here with us? that the struggle for civil rights at the end of the day begins with people who are not afraid to shake things up. There will not be a magic day when we wake up and it's now okay to express ourselves publicly. We make that day by doing things publicly until it's simply the way things are. The reality is that the struggle for civil rights at the end of the day begins with people who are not afraid to shake things up. So what do we do? We stand here, year after year. We create rallies, we talk to our legislators, we pray, we share our stories. We're asking to ride on the same bus, eat at the same counter, treat us equally. And what exactly are we asking for? Well, it's simple. You can sum it up in three words. Full federal equality. Everyone will be able to get married in that rotunda, and we will have full equality for our community. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, and I know that the time is soon. At the 10th anniversary of February 14, 2004, we will have something really amazing to celebrate, which is a final conclusion to our battle for marriage equality, at least in California. I do believe that we are on the right side of history and that we as an LGBT community will not only get the right to marry the person we love, but that in every single facet of what happens in this society, that we as an LGBT people will be treated equally.